Okay, well, maybe, maybe we'll get started on this. Uh, I wanna welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Steven Matisio. I'm the director and chief curator of the Blaffer Art Museum. And uh, I'm coming to you from a remote location outside of Houston right now to, to introduce tonight's program. And uh, we, are, we are so excited. I think COVID has sort of made the world smaller and larger at once. And this is our first international edition of Convergence Research. And uh, I just wanna give a huge thanks to both Ryan Holloway and Larissa Bauge for, for joining us tonight and being the, the featured performers. Uh, we are so excited. Convergence Research is a program that we sort of, for, we started at the Blaffer Museum to encourage and support and celebrate interdisciplinary performance in a very sort of experimental way. Performances in all stages of development, spanning all kinds of disciplines and we wanted to support and amplify that and so typically it's sort of been on the university sort of celebrating student work and faculty work and all sort of the interminglings of that um, but this has given us now the online zoom platform has given us the opportunity to spread much further and so we are so excited to celebrate these two artists this evening and uh, before we get to, I'm gonna hand it off to Melissa to introduce the artists. I just wanna give a big thanks to our co-curators of the evening, Melissa Noble and Amanda Powers, who, who brought and welcomed the artists to the table. And a big thanks to Colleen Maynard, our executive assistant at the Blaffer for always doing all the logistical work and making sure things run smoothly. And thank all of you for joining us this evening. Uh, so with that, I'm going to hand it off to Melissa to introduce the artists. Thank you, Stephen. Um, yes, thank you to the Blaffer staff for their support in this program. We couldn't do it without them. And um, we have such an exciting program tonight with Ryan Holloway, who is joining us from his studio in his home in Houston, and Larissa Bausch, who is joining us at 2 a.m. from the Netherlands. <laughs> Um, tonight's program is going to be Ryan performing his piece first. It is a live sound piece um, with a pre-recorded video stream. Um, so Ryan's going to get started in a moment and then uh, I will introduce Larissa's piece after Ryan's piece finishes. So Ryan Holloway was born in California, raised in Texas. His work is meant to be seen as unfamiliar in familiar places and is inspired by his environment and emotional senses. Ryan creates a whole experience for others visually, auditorially, and olfactory. Unfortunately, we don't get to experience that part tonight. He is inspired by current affairs and what he experiences throughout his life and sometimes lives lives of others. So Ryan, take us away. Um, I do wanna just say one thing, sorry a housekeeping thing about Zoom. If you can make sure you keep your mics muted because Ryan is gonna be using the sound. And um, also it'll probably look best if you can uh, put it in speaker view and not gallery view. So you can see Ryan doing his, his or you can see his video in the speaker view, okay? And just quickly, we'll do the Q&A after both of the performances. Um, and you can share your questions in the chat box and Melissa will sort of serve as moderator. Yes, we'll do a little artist talking question and answer after both performances. All right, thank you. Take it away, Ryan. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. That was lovely. And uh, I'm sure people are going to have um, some questions and interest to talk with you more about it uh, after Larissa's, Larissa's piece. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Larissa Bauge has recorded um, a piece. I believe it was just yesterday because we knew that the timing of this was going to be um, so late for her. Um, 
Larissa's artistic background is characterized by diversity. She was trained and worked as a orchestra conductor and composer. And her work has been shown internationally in museums, festivals, such as the Venice International Performance Week, Oslo Performance Art Festival, Riga Contemporary, just to name a few. Her work challenges the very nature of the concept of belonging, roots, and the necessity of being part of something bigger. She takes the basic instinct as a main poetic driving force on a quest to reestablish lost connections between people. She is strongly influenced by socially engaged and feminist practice. Larissa's piece is performed by herself as well as Kia Fogelberg and it, the camera work was done by Tasha Arlova. So we are going to, after a moment, um, Amanda is gonna start the film for that. And after we end, we will start our artist talk question answer. So this is an, the interesting part of our virtual world is that um, everyone sees something slightly different. <laughs> um, and that's part of our challenge here, right? With, um, with doing our work virtually. But I'd like to um, just take any questions if people want to um, post some questions in the chat. But also, um, you know, we are open to uh, asking verbal questions as well. I, I would love to uh, I'll start with Ryan um, and just say, uh, ask you a little bit, Ryan, about um, the symbolism of the curtain and the behind the curtain. Uh, I was very intrigued by that. So I'm just gonna ask you that question and then maybe other people will chime in as well. Um, it's more so like the performance aspect because we don't um, have a stage, you know, uh, virtually from, um, you know, the coronavirus and whatever right now. So I just thought that I would kind of create my own little uh, behind the uh, curtain and then just come uh, out of the curtain and like it, just give it like a more theatrical uh, feeling behind the piece. Yeah. I thought it was very intriguing. Thanks. Um, could, I, could I follow up quickly on that question, Ryan? I was I was really struck by sort of when you're behind the curtain, it's sort of very blurry and there's sort of this impression. And then you come, you open the curtain and there's a really striking silhouette. Like you're, the lines of your body become very sharp in silhouette against sort of the shade. And I'm just wondering how you thought, like it becomes almost painterly and your body almost becomes this brush and sort of tool to sort of paint through. And I was just curious whether, how you thought about sort of composition. Yeah, composition. Um, I think my photos are normally like that, how I photograph. So I just pretty much took my photography and just turned it into video. And um, that's kind of like where my work is going right now is more video work. So I'm just trying to, um, I guess, change my, the way I do my art through video. Yeah. Now, Larissa, could I, could I ask you, it, it felt like your piece, I saw these sort of moments that seem to be inspired by art history. Um, and there's this just incredibly striking moment when I'm thinking of the Pieta um, by Michelangelo and the way the woman is sort of holding you and the way your body yeah. is sort of arranged on her. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering how you, if you were drawing upon certain sort of historical references and sort of how you translated them into that, into that contemporary piece. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah, Pietà, but more than Pietà, it was uh, this myth called uh, Roman Caritas, which, uh, talks about salvation of this man from the prison, like he was sentenced to be, uh, to die there uh, from hunger and he was saved by his daughter. 
who was giving him her breast milk. Like she would come and visit and give him the breast milk. It's also depicted in a lot of uh, painting, sculpture, like whole 16th, 17th century. You have Rubens, you have, uh, you have all those guys. <laughs> Raphael, I think, also has it. So like sort of uh, a bit of a, right now, something viewed as a bit of like, perverted image, let's say. But originally, this story was about a mother and a daughter. Who knows why with the times the the story was completely something else it was a father it was like somehow sexualized but yeah you're very right in the end it's pieta it's converted into pieta all right thank you oh, it's not like a dog So there's a question in the chat for Ryan. Um, did you start with the image or the music and how do the two elements work together? Mm. Um, I actually created the music like a couple weeks ago. And um, like a lot of my work has been around like the social injustice and uh, that movement, I guess for a pretty long time, maybe the like the last, four four years four five years but it's just been on my mind and i've um i've just been creating work that has to do with you know racism and pretty much the light of um blacks that are um just being you know, i guess murdered by the police and just being forgotten about and that racism doesn't exist but um uh music yeah so then i created the music uh, after that and i kind of just flowed it to what i um i created with the video and i made the video like yesterday yeah larissa i'm very curious about the transition at the beginning of the piece where you and the other performer are kind of standing and just sort of talking and chatting and then the, this transition into the performance. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, thank you. Such a nice question. Yeah, basically uh, we filmed it several times and we have, of course, like the filmmaker, she's uh, quite amazing, quite professional. So we have a couple of uh, versions where the image is absolutely clean, where camera is static, where we could make uh, nice editing and pretty film out of it, where every action is very clear from very clear angle and so on. But when I saw it, it felt absolutely dead. And like, even though we didn't want to pretend that this is a live performance, so we will just have a, you know, we wouldn't have the same uh, energy, the same feeling as if, uh, you know, the audience would be there, the presence. It's very difficult to recreate. But what is very important for me in performance in general as a genre is the transformation. Is how with a couple of details, I can go from reality, normal life, into a sort of magic, into fairy tale, into a different reality, into a biblical story. And, you know, like, I don't know, this video is very short, right? Like it was so five, seven minutes. And when I saw that with a live camera, with this messy moving around, you know, angles from us being in normal clothes, being absolutely nowhere, like nowhere, just real life with changing a couple of details, a red thing here, a different pose there, we are already in this ritual. And this ritual was very real. Like with this woman, this is exactly what we wanted. We are very close right now. She's a very good friend of mine and she sort of saved my life at some point. So uh, even though right now you have so many events to be inspired from, all they are like, 
quite political and I somehow I was drawn to this personal story of us of how we like she's 70 I'm 35 and we lived together for three months during this pandemia time it yeah so I wanted to honor this relationship with this ritual and I was thinking how to do it and uh, this sort of work was absolutely life I think uh, if you can see, if you can, like for me, of course, I, from as insider, I can feel a lot of things happening there and I can feel the transformation. And I still like after a couple of days, we see each other and we sort of went to a new level. So yeah, what I wanted to show with this from nothing to something changing is the transformation, which is way easier to show live during the live performance but very difficult to show on video and you know i wanted to reimagine this reality that we are in right now you know to show how to do life work in this sort of conditions would it be possible with the video so yeah joy you have a question sure i wanted to ask larissa a question um so um, we were talking earlier about this piece having a lot of really beautiful images. And what struck me is that really um, you have a lot of action going on in the background and more image in the front, which can be very distracting, right? Because normally you would have background with image in the front, particularly in performance. And so I'm curious as to how you were, because although performance isn't completely concerned with the image, especially in videography, you have to be somewhat concerned with the image in itself, how it's, how it's produced, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm curious as like all this stuff is kind of going on around in the background and you're having these like beautiful, like sort of statuesque moments, how you were, when you were thinking about it, how you were navigating that, um, that um, sort of tension between the action in the background and the, and the quietude that was in the foreground. Yeah, I think they work pretty well. Yeah, we knew that uh, also we uh, don't want to do continuous action, but sort of have image, stop, image, stop, image, stop. So the cows there with the constant thing would be a great background, a great, uh, the sound that they make is amazing. It's, uh, but also it is another layer because uh, Kea, the woman with whom I performed, that was her favorite place, she told me. She felt like in her childhood, she felt like in her youth. And also there is another aspect, a lot of things that we would like, the topic that would recur constantly in our conversations with her was the motherhood and the fact that she never became a mother and probably I would have the same destiny. The cows behind are young cows that uh, they're growing them up for meat. They will never, they all are females, but they will never have <laughs> little cows. So uh, we saw this, this absolutely amazing place. As soon as we came there, I took a couple of shots of her to just to see what sort of, like whether the image that I had in mind worked. And she told me, I feel so calm here. I feel like in my, in my sauce, you know, and like in, in a good company. And I said, yeah, we're all the same here. We all feel females without, you know, like with this unused uh, boob, unused womb, and, uh, but in the same time, we all like, you know, here existing, living our destiny. So, so you know, it, I don't know. I, how clumsy am I explaining this, but uh, it just, it clicked in a good way. I just want to make a comment about that it was so nurturing this what you just described is that you would never have this nurturing and yet the whole thing was about nurturing and that was yeah lovely. it was about uh, we talked about the fact that we were feeding each other through the course of our friendship and uh when i yeah did a sort of research and i saw this myth about uh yeah, a daughter feeding a mother, I said to her, would you be comfortable at all in doing something like that? We can, you know, stylize it. 
somehow. So we did. So it's not completely. So we also could go for that. It's just not, I don't know, it didn't feel right, I guess. So it's more christening with water rather than like really sucking on each other's breath. But yeah, it was about that uh, nature. Absolutely. Could I, um, I wanted to ask another question to Ryan. Um, Ryan, I was I was curious, like when you, you create the video, and obviously this is the first time you've performed the piece, but would you perform it with different audio? Say if you would re-perform this piece and use the same video, but the audio I can imagine could be very, very different depending on sort of the mood or the circumstance. And just curious if you would plan to do that or if you've done that in your past work. Um, if I did it live, I'd, um, I'd probably do the same audio, um, but I think I could probably make the work more cohesive, I guess, uh, mesh a bit more, because I can go off of like musicality, because I already know the uh, song, but I was pretty much doing it opposite, so I was creating the music to the video in this instance, so it's flip-flops. Yeah. I'll ask another question, if I can, may I? <laughs> well, so Larissa, you have a background in conducting, right? And so then you move to performance. So. How has your um, sort of education and professional experience as a conductor and as a musician, how has that informed the way in which you approach performance? Well, uh, my education is, I mean, the way of, in which I construct a piece is very much informed by music, but by musical thinking. But musical thinking is not only sound or, you know, like noise or it also concerns form, it concerns rhythm. So I would say like if, even when I am performing, I know sort of, I'm very conscious with movement so that the surroundings or what, what is going on around. So I think that's uh, what they call the musical thinking or the way I construct as well, I, I'm really aware about form. I know where is the beginning, there will be always a clear sort of ending, in a way, a culmination, or it's clear absence. So form and rhythm would be there. And of course, like I'm conscious about sound in general, but that is something else that comes more from like sort of a library that I have in my head that could contribute to the performance. Musical way of thinking, that's what I would say. Can I ask something to Ryan? <laughs> In that respect, so. Yeah, I was wondering, yeah, how do you construct your form? So uh, if there is such a, you know, aspect so basically how do you know when it's over do you sort of uh do you want an applause afterwards like or does it just merges <laughs> into life or like how like you're how asking you like how, how how the ending how how do i end yeah, but in general, like the form of your performance, so it's, uh, it's this uh, piece, right, that exists in uh, yeah. on a timeline. So uh -huh. do you construct that timeline somehow? Do you have a clear end? Do you have a frame or is it just... Oh my God, is it just flow? Um, hmm. I think it more... For this video, it flowed. Um, I'm trying to think. 
because I haven't done too much video work. Um, thinking. Um, yeah, it's just it just flowed. Um, it had an ending to it. Um, I pretty much stopped my performance like when I was tired. I just stopped as soon as I was tired. I, I know in my head that I, I was going to do music to it. So I did, I did like do the actual piece like to, um, I was dancing to Radiohead actually. So I, I kind of like wanted to go off of that vibe, like just like a chill type of uh, music that I was listening to. And then I just um, created the piece um, I pretty much finished it like yesterday and um, that all just like went together and yeah Larissa can I, ask, can I ask you is there is there ever an element of rehearsal in your performance or do you do you want it to be in the moment like when you're recording or when you're performing do you want that to be the first time or is there ever a time that you'll try to perfect a series of movements? Yeah, yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, we have two versions basically recorded of this performance and uh, one is this rehearsed in a way thing. And if not rehearsed, I would say very clean. Clean angle, clean movement. And what I presented here is when we decided let's do it absolutely like just you know sort of how it goes and focus only on transformation so transformation from yeah neutral image into very constructed image but also let's focus on our tra let's listen to ourselves sort of like inside what's going on how how do we interact what whether there is a shift of uh, energy in there whether the ritual really works in a way because that that is the point of performance not not beautiful image or movement so yeah there would be an element of rehearsal definitely and perfection and so on but when it's not needed it's not needed in any case, yeah, it's really, it would be a very boring point. It's good for photography, but for performance, I don't think it's interesting. Yeah, thank you. And especially on video, because you can really manipulate it perfectly and have your perfection in, you just have a nice editor. We have another question for Ryan. I'm curious to know whether quarantine influenced Ryan's piece, looking out through the blinds, emerging from behind the curtain, trepidatious music. Um, to some extent, yes, I think so. But uh, mainly it, it kind of uh, represents um, being like um, a person of color and um, you know, watching the news and being you know so scared to go outside because you might watch you'll, you'll see so many uh blacks get killed you know and being so like um i guess scared to go out into the world and just um just be, become so emotional and be so um enclosed but it also goes hand in hand with like quarantine also as well. So I have like, I had both of those kind of in mind whenever I was creating the piece. And as I watched the video, I, um, I fully like understood like what the piece was. Yeah, a different kind of quarantine. <laughs> yeah. So um, if anyone else had trouble um, viewing Larissa's, uh, Larissa's video, uh, we are going to try to post it. Um, I think Amanda is working on that right now. Um, 
we can put that on the Blaffer website under the Convergence Research somewhere. Um, <clears throat> I don't know that Amanda has that link right now for me to put into the chat, but if she gets it before we end tonight, I will put it in the chat for you. Does anyone else have any questions or comments for our artists tonight? I am curious how everyone else was able to view um, Carita's, Larissa's piece. Did anyone else have um, trouble with the, um, or was the video not working well for anyone else? I've, the video was hitching a little bit for me, but the sound, see the audio was present, but the video was a little bit uh, jagged. Okay. Yeah, the video is fine for me and the sound. Yeah, someone else wrote in the chat that they were both very moving performances and the video was fine uh, for this. This is Susana Monteverde. Thank you, Susana. Yeah. Thanks. All right. I guess we'll conclude this evening of Convergence Research if no one else has any other comments. And please check back if you would like um, to see Larissa's link of the video. We'll try to get it posted somewhere. <laughs> so thank you again. And please check in with Convergence Research on um, August 27th. We are going to have a couple of artists from UH who are alumni and we're still in the midst of deciding who they are but um, keep your eye out on the Blaffer website and social media for that information. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much to Ryan, Larissa, and everyone for joining us. Yes, it was just great. Your perform both of you, your performances were such an amazing, um, interesting, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? <laughs> <laughs> They were very different, yeah. <laughs> complimentary <laughs> yet different. Yeah. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. Good night. Bonsoir. Thank you.